Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the top 15 figures coming in September. I'm glad to be back to 15 this month because I always enjoy some variation in my figures and this list definitely has the variation. There's plenty of anime figures as well as a couple of original creations and there's also some western characters so I feel like this list will have something for everyone. And apparently because it's something my list have been lacking, we have male characters in here, some nice X and Y chromosomes. Zones. I've been starting to post my lists on my figure collection and the largest collective response has been where are the male characters? Well here are the male characters and it's not that I don't like male figures but I just prefer females a lot more. But with that said all of the figures on this list I consider pretty epic so let's get this started with number 15. San Shokuen Sumureko made by Fudiyu from Oresuki Are You The Only One Who Loves Me? This girl's nickname is Pansy. <laughs> I have no idea why, but she's rocking the Megane, and though maybe it's not used much in anime these days, everyone should know the rule is, the thicker the glasses over her eyes, the more beautiful this girl is in her disguise. Ooh, I like that, I just made that up on the spot, but it definitely applies. Oh god, I'm stuck in rhyme mode! Alright, Patty Shark Heart Attack, let's get this going! <laughs> What the fuck am I talking about? Glasses are untapped potential in anime and when they come off, that is when the character shines. This is the first figure for this character and the series she's from and I always like when companies integrate real clothing into their designs and in this case they do that in the form of her tights. But my favourite thing about this figure has to be her face. It has some really nice paintwork on her lips and especially around her eyes. And there's also some really nice blue tips in her hair. Hmm, I like them. Number 14, Takao made by Ulta from Azur Lane. This one's another debut figure, at least officially. There have been a number of garage kits of Takao and I guess Ulta saw enough potential and decided to acquire the license. This figure is very similar to a previous garage kit from 2018 made by the circle Garakia, but I couldn't find any information suggesting they collaborated with Ulta for this release. I believe they both shared the same concept image and it's likely a coincidence, but either way, this figure is gorgeous and it shows Takao in her one piece bikini which she's less frequently depicted in. More often she's shown in her military uniform. But just like with the last figure, this one has beautiful paintwork around her eyes and I love the auburn colours they've used. Number 13, Oshino Shinobu made by Furiyu from the Monogatari series. This figure costs over $2,000 and let me tell you why. It's kind of hard to tell from the photos but this figure is going to be one half scale. Many of you obviously know what that means already but just quickly for those of you who don't, this figure is going to be half the size of her actual character so i.e. it's going to be huge. It's probably a good thing that she's laying down so the dimensions and her weight can get an even distribution on a wide surface should anyone decide to display her on a shelf. It's always going to be my dream to one day own a massive figure, like one third or one half scale and it's always going to be a huge investment. I remember when I bought my first car, I paid a little over $2,000 and obviously that was used and it was a quite older model but the fact that you could choose to buy a car with how much money this figure is commanding is pretty ridiculous. But obviously for some that have the money, it's worth it. I know there's some pretty big Shinobu and Monogatari fans out there, but for the rest of us, oh, we can look from afar and one day dream of what it might be like to drop four figures on an anime girl. Number 12, Hatsune Miku made by Good Small Company from the Vocaloid franchise. If you've watched a few of these videos, you'd know Miku never stays off this list for very long. There's a bit of time where yeah, there's not a lot of Miku figures coming out and then all of a sudden some amazing ones get announced and they're getting better and better and better. The fact that Good Small is making this figure pretty much speaks for itself in terms of the level of quality. The paint in her hair stands out most to me. They've gone for a slightly lighter blue with less green in it than what they usually do and the gradients in there are amazing. My only complaint is the blacks in her outfit, particularly on the skirt, seem to be a bit heavy. Like they just seem to be a bit globbed on and they might be hiding some detail. It's not that bad, I have seen worse, but the fact that it's like that on the prototype is a little bit worrying. The other thing I'm a little bit worried about is her pose. She's leaning way off to one side and I know they put her hair behind her to try to counteract the weight and don't get me 
wrong, it looks amazing, but she looks to be heavily biased in her weight distribution and I'm worried over time she might lean and put a lot of pressure on her ankle, warping or possibly even breaking the figure. It's quite possible she might come with a support and I'd honestly say in the long term she probably needs one, but if anyone can make a design like this structurally stable, it's definitely the artisans at Goodsmile. I mean, they've pretty much done magic in the past, so if I put my faith in anyone, it's definitely them. Number 11, Milam Nava made by Freeing from that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Nava has a pretty damn cute design. I've always thought that, but I'm glad Freeing decided to add their two cents and bunnify her. Now, out of all of Freeing's bunny figures, even though they're more simplistic, I definitely prefer the black bunny suits over the rest. They have such a sleek look to them, and no matter who they're on, they always look great. The colored ones can also be nice, but the black ones are just classic, a throwback to the original design. Nava's pink twin tails really get shown off with this figure. She just seems to slip right into the outfit naturally. No one asked for it, but it really does work. It's part of why I love figures. It allows any creative vision to be explored. By now, Freeing is well known for their bunny line. The company was literally built upon releasing bunny figures, but initially, all it took was for one person to say, you know what, I think this character would look good in a bunny suit. We should make a figure of that, and the rest was history. Number 10, Emilia made by Alpha Satellite from ReZero, starting life in another world. This figure is going to be one of two debut figures from a brand new company, Alpha Satellite. I know very little about this Japanese company. The only thing I really do know is they have some amazing figures in the works and if they can deliver the same level of quality shown in their prototypes, they will quickly become a company to look out for. However, their prices definitely aren't cheap. In fact, in my opinion, they're a little bit over the top, but considering every figure they make has so much detail packed into their characters and there is an abundance of extra surroundings in the sculpt, it's easy to see why they became a bit inflated. Still, if you can look past that, this figure of Amelia is quite dynamic and it would definitely catch your eye on a shelf. But despite its quality, it's actually one of my lesser favourites the company is making. I far prefer the other figure coming out this month, which is number 9, Rem, also made by Alpha Satellite, also from ReZero, starting life in another world. I tossed and turned over putting this figure higher on the list because it is quite nice to look at. The dress is by far my favourite part of this figure. Rem looks incredible, spotlighted in the centre with her dress flowing around her and the crystals and the water rising from below. But that leads me to the reason I didn't put this figure as high as I was initially going to, and that is the crystals and water are okay, but I think they're a little bit overdone, especially with the water at the front. The clear plastic it's made from isn't particularly appealing to me, in fact I'd say it cheapens the figure a little. Some of these water effects would have been nice, but there is just a cluster rising up from the middle and it's absolute chaos. It really detracts from Rem in my opinion, where it should be adding to her. And also it just doesn't blend with the crystals at the back, they both stand out as completely different shapes and between them and Rem and the dress, there is way too much going on. Still, that's just my opinion and I think it's a nice figure, just a little bit misguided. I also think it could use more colour variation as well, it seems a bit washed out with all the blue, but it might pop more in person. Number 8, The Joker, made by Prime 1 Studio from Batman Ninja. This is another figure over $2000, that's if you get the deluxe version. It's quite incredible the price scale of collectible figures that exists. Like obviously not everyone is going to be able to afford something like this, but even with such a high entry point, they clearly do sell. It's not uncommon for Prime 1 Studio to release as many as 10 different statues in any given month. This month they have around 8 coming out I believe, and the lowest price is still over $1000. Two things I'd really say I like is Batman, who's definitely always been my favourite superhero, and the Batman Gotham universe is by far the best in my opinion in terms of its characters and stories. And secondly, Feudal Japan. It may seem bizarre, but I have this never ending love and fascination with the medieval Japanese setting. Video games, movies, anime, manga, I'm drawn to anything that involves samurai or ninja, especially if it's a relatively historically accurate representation of the time whether that be in fiction or non-fiction. But that's not to say I don't love 
love the romanticism of it as well, which is clearly what this figure belongs to. Most people don't know the real intricacies of samurai and ninja in the feudal times, and they're more aware of the fantastic versions we see in pop culture. As an example, ninja didn't actually wear the full black hooded clothing they're often depicted in. It's possible black clothing was used during night operations as a form of camouflage, but typically ninjas were covert operatives, more akin to spies, and so they wore things that wouldn't make them stand out. They would pose as commoners, farmers, villagers, workers, and wear clothing that the everyday person would wear so they couldn't be distinguished from anyone else. The black robe ninja was actually invented for theatres to make them appear mysterious and dangerous for the audience. The idea of dark clothing was to ensure that bloodstains would be less visible and covering the face would show no emotions or expressions from the person. They were invented for, lack of a better word, entertainment so the crowd saw them as unfeeling, unyielding, mysterious foes who were almost supernatural in stealth and fighting prowess. And so in this way, romanticism allowed fun and expressive exploration, and that's very similar to this Joker figure. Batman Ninja is all about taking the Batman characters and putting them into a feudal Japanese-inspired setting, and I think that concept is awesome. From what I can tell, the only difference between the regular and deluxe version is the deluxe version comes with this large Japanese art stand in the background. Number 7. Mato Ryuko and Senketsu made by Amakuni from Kill la Kill. Kill the Kill figures don't come out overly often anymore, and even when the show was at its peak, there wasn't a great deal made. This figure is, in all honesty, pretty much identical to one that came out back in 2018, save for one little detail. They added water droplets all over her body, and I'm not sure when this idea started, but this figure isn't the first to imitate water droplets. I have seen some photographers literally pour water over their figures to give it this kind of soaking look, so this is definitely a better option than that if you wanted to have a figure look like this. The term Amakuni used for this figure is Yuwagari Onsen Tsuyuhada, which roughly translates to after bathing in the hot springs during the rainy season. So that's exactly what they were going for here. They also released Satsuki in this theme, and between the two of them, there is not much left for imagination. Number 6, Hurdle Shoujo made by Alpha Max. Yes, this figure is literally called Hurdle Girl. Straight off the bat, it's a full cast off, which is to be expected from Alpha Max's SkyTube line. This figure got delayed from last month, and full transparency, I was going to put it at number 1. I know that's probably controversial for some of you, but to me, this figure has got it all. One thing I'm starting to recognise as a pattern with figures I like is a very simple yet very effective colour scheme, typically using minimal colours. I'm sure there's a term for it that I'm not aware of, but the best way I can describe it is using this figure as an example. Apart from her skin and hair and obviously the base, everything on this figure is either orange and white or white and black. There's a clear separation with any given piece of clothing or accessory or even her eyes falling into one colour scheme or the other. I've noticed this time and time again on figures I like and it's very simple but very effective, at least on me. On a side note, I think the base is either made from or made to imitate the red rubber turf you'd find on running tracks and I think that's an awesome detail, especially if they use the right material. I would love to rub my hand across it. <laughs> I'm weird like that. I want to touch some things, but other things I cannot stand to touch. Number 5, Batman and the Joker, made by Prime 1 Studio from Dark Knight's Metal. I'm not going to pretend that I know the story of what led to this confrontation between these particular versions of Batman as this Nordic kind of warrior and the Joker as a giant serpent. But I will say the story behind this statue comes from a comic series where Batman essentially discovers a dark multiverse containing alternate and more importantly evil versions of himself and other characters in the DC universe. This is where the Batman who laughs comes from, who I covered in a previous figure video. This version of Batman very much reminds me of Skyrim. I think this is what he would become if you threw him into the world of Skyrim, which that would be pretty damn cool. I hope someone mods that in one day. The deluxe version comes with three face portraits and one contains a grizzly beard, which makes him look like a viking. It also comes with an LED lit torch, which is always something awesome, and an alternate chest plate with a different Batman logo. Number 4, Albedo, made by Union Creative International Limited from Overlord 3. 
I haven't seen Overlord, so once I found this figure, I googled the character and I found out she's a succubus. Nice. Now, from an outsider's perspective, there's only really one reason why I like this figure, and it's probably going to be nothing to do with the show, so fans of the show, bear with me here. Her appearance to me has both an angelic and demonic demeanor, meeting somewhere in the middle. She has large wings, which would symbolize a more angelic nature, but they're also black, which might suggest a fall from grace. She also has horns, which definitely suggests she's darker in nature, and so she has this supernatural, perhaps even gothic horror look to her, and I do really like it. There's certain musical groups I like that use very similar imagery in their performances, and I think that's where I'm drawing the comparison here. So in that way, this figure's really different to anything I've seen before. And I mean, look at her long, gorgeous legs, and those shoes are mm, impeccable. Number three, Chocola, made by Alpha Max from Nekopara. Recently, the Nekopara figures have been amazing, and Alpha Max has added another beauty to their SkyTube line. Here, Chocola comes in a floral pink Chinese dress, and this outfit is fantastic. I really like her stockings and heels, but the whole thing overall is great, and again, you can see that minimal color scheme I was talking about before. With her right hand, she can do the whole <laughs> or she can choose to hold a Chinese lantern, and I'm not 100%, but I think it has an LED light in there. On a completely random note, I love Chocola's hair. It has to be up there as my favorite, well, hair, <laughs> I guess. You can also pick up vanilla to go with Chocola, and together they form the complete fan base, and the tails make an adorable Chocola vanilla heart. And uh, just on the sly, there is also a deluxe version of both Chocola and Vanilla, which is absolutely 100% not safe to show in this video. Number two. Hyakimaru made by Furuyu from Dododo. If you haven't seen any adaptation of Tezuka Osamu's Dododo, I would highly recommend checking out one of them, probably the 2019 anime over anything else. The story is incredible, especially considering it was written back in the 60s. It centers around this boy, this young man who was searching for his limbs and other parts of his body that were taken away from him at birth. It's a sad tale, but it's also a lesson about overcoming adversity and not taking things for granted and never giving up despite your shortcomings. It combines a feudal Japanese setting, which you all know I love, with Japanese folklore and demonology. And as you can see on this figure, in place of Hyakimaru's lost limbs, he is given wooden prosthetics containing hidden blades. It's with these blades that he kills the demons and slowly regains the rest of his body over the course of the story. This figure is one of the smaller ones on this list, but even so, it's the story and the message that this character stands for that I truly enjoy. You can see a look in Hyakimaru's eyes that normal people don't have. This boy has suffered, he's felt pain and betrayal that most people couldn't even begin to comprehend. He was literally born limbless, faceless, featureless, with no potential for anything, much less happiness. And yet, despite all of that, through grit and determination, he transformed himself from nothing into something. For him, it would have been easier to give up. He could have spent his whole life as a victim, obsessing over how the world did him wrong and never amounting to anything else. But instead of complaining, he took control of his life, as little left as he had, and then he fought back. And every time I look at this figure, I like to think of that. And finally, number one, Son Goku made by Prime One Studio from Dragon Ball Z. This is the definitive statue of Goku for hardcore Dragon Ball Z fans. It's a one-fourth scale, and it comes in both a standard and a deluxe version. And included in the deluxe version is not only the regular Goku launching the Kamehameha, but you also get alternate heads for Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, and Super Saiyan 3 launching his signature attack. If this figure wasn't, again, over $2,000, I would be tempted to buy four of these just so I could have each iteration of Goku out on display. Everything about it is so dynamic. Looking at it from the side and the back, you can see how they've attached rocks to Goku to make them appear as though they are levitating just through the sheer force of his power. Each of the energy waves also has LED lights in them for added effect. And Prime One Studio also has a Vegeta in the works, and between the two of them, they are easily over 9,000!